Howdy gang and welcome back to Pool School. In today's lesson, I am finally going to address a subject that so many people have asked me about and I'm finally getting around to doing it. I figure we're at the end of the pool season so this is a good time to address it. It is on startup chemicals and putting startup chemicals in your pool water to get it going for the first time. So, what do you say we dive right in? Alrighty, before we get going, I want to again thank you for watching this video. I want to ask you to like this video if you do, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And please share my channel and this video with your friends who own their own pools who are looking to save some money servicing the pool themselves. Or maybe they're dissatisfied with the service they're getting right now and want to take it over themselves. Or maybe they're even just looking to double check to make sure they don't get ripped off. So please feel free to share this channel. All right, so we are talking about new pool water okay so there's a couple reasons one you might have drained your pool for the purpose of um, repairing something or maybe your water was old and you're going to dra you drained it and refilled it if you want to know about that i'm going to put a link in the description below of my video on changing your pool water why and when and so you can check that out and look at why and when you might be changing your pool water okay the other reason is maybe you have a brand new pool and you've just filled it up for the first time and you need to get some chemicals in there so I understand that too so we're gonna take this in two parts the first part I'm going to talk about the short list of the chemicals you're gonna need for your startup of your pool chemistry all right the good news is those are chemicals you're gonna use in the regular maintenance of your pool so you can keep them on hand providing you just keep them in a nice um, ventilated area that's away from direct sunlight okay and then the second part I'm going to talk to you about how to add those chemicals because I have a little bit different take I think on adding the chemicals than a lot of people um, so we'll go from there so first thing let's go over the list of the things you're going to need and again don't panic if you don't get it all down I'm going to put it in the description below the list in order of how I tell them to you so that you can have them down okay alrighty first thing that you're going to want to have is some test strips all right and my my go-to would be this one this is the AquaCheck 7 test strip it's also called AquaCheck Silver now I'm not going to put any links to these things in my video because number one I don't make any money off of them and it's very easy to go, do a Google search and just look these up so again you check that it's the AquaCheck 7 made by and I don't know how to pronounce that H-A-C-H very easy to find I did a Google search and found a bunch of them okay one of the reasons I like this one is because for your needs you're gonna to want to make sure you can test the cyanuric acid see that right there cyanuric acid that's critical when it comes to servicing your pool especially at a startup now in my video on testing your pool chemistry which I'll put a link to below I use the aqua check four in ones or five in ones and the reason I do that is they're cheaper and I go through them a lot more because I have a lot of clients so I go through tube after tube of those pretty quickly and I don't really need to check the cyanuric acid every single week nor do you but rather than having two different types this will suffice and this comes in a tube of a hundred so if you're checking your pool water twice a week even really once you get it going once a week is sufficient you're not going to be going through many of these this will last you close to two years so this is a good deal and that way you don't have to have both and again if you haven't watched my video on testing your pool chemistry please do so on the link below okay all right so that's the first item that you need the second item that you need is cyanuric acid you're going to want about a five pound bucket or tub or bag of cyanuric acid it's dry sometimes it's granular and you're going to want to that have that for your needs okay the next item you're going to need is liquid chlorine I suggest getting four gallons of liquid chlorine okay you can get them at Walmart they sell them in a two pack two one gallon jugs I've seen them at Home Depot and Lowe's or you can get them at your pool supply store but it's four gallons of liquid chlorine oh by the way remember I am basing this on your pool being a typical play pool which is about 10 to 15 thousand gallons if you have a larger pool it has a diving end which is deep end you're probably going to be looking at 20 to 25 thousand gallons but you're still going to add the chemicals the same way and you probably don't need much more than I'm suggesting now okay so liquid chlorine is the next thing after cyanuric acid all right that's the sec uh, that's the third thing right the fourth thing you're going to need the fourth and fifth actually pertain to dealing with pH more on that in a second but you're gonna want a five pound bag of soda ash okay a five pound bag of soda ash 
And then you're also going to want two gallons of liquid muriatic acid. Again, two gallons of liquid muriatic acid. And those two things are going to help you adjust the pH, whether it's low or high. We'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. And then the last two things you're going to need pertain to alkalinity. And those are a five pound bag or tub of bicarbonate of soda. Okay. Bicarbonate of soda. And you're going to also want a five pound bag of dry pool acid, okay, dry pool acid. So those are the chemicals that you are going to need and the tool that you're going to need to test your chemistry. So with that said, remember, I put all these in an order, in a list, in the description of this video, so you can check it out and, and look them up accordingly, all right? Now that we've done that, let's go into adding the chemicals. Okay, so your pool water is filled up. It's completely filled up. And here's where I differ in philosophy sometimes. People, some people go into, do a Google search and say, here's the size of my pool. What chemicals should I add in and how much to begin the startup of my pool? I'm not a fan of that because you just started out with fresh water. But even if you have fresh water in your pool, there's residual chemicals in your pool and there's chemicals in the water source that your pool came, that your water came from. So that's gonna affect, for instance, I did a, a refill on a, on a health club's pool. We drained it, ref, refilled it. They wanted to add a bunch of chlorine to it. And I said, let's test the water first. We tested the chlorine levels. It was off the charts. Two reasons. Number one, that city's water was really highly chlorinated. And there was residual chlorine left on the plaster of the pool that was there. So when we refilled it, there was a lot of chlorine still in the pool. So I'm not a fan of adding chemicals based on a chart. I prefer, maybe it's an old fashioned way, maybe it's a slower way, but I think it's safer because what you don't want to do is oversaturate your pool water and then all of a sudden have to drain it and refill it again because you put too much chemicals in your pool and now you have a problem, okay? So start slow. It's not going to take you that much time to do, okay? So your pool water is filled. You've got your pump and your system primed and the water is flowing through your system, in through the suction, out through the returns and everything's open and circulating. Leave your pool system running when you add your chemicals until you've got your chemicals balanced to where you want them, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your AquaCheck 7 test strip and you're gonna take it out and you're gonna dip it in the water. I'm not gonna get great details on this and you're gonna pull it out. It tells you to wait about 10 to 15 seconds. Once you get past about 25 seconds on these, then the colors start to change too much and then you're kinda of like, you're not gonna get super accurate reading. So between 10 to 15 seconds. But the things that you're looking for, you're gonna look for the total chlorine and the, I'm sorry, the total hardness, you don't worry about the total hardness, hard water is hard water and that's from your water sources, There's nothing you can do about that. You're gonna look at your total chlorine and your free chlorine, okay? You're also gonna wanna check your pH. Your alkalinity is gonna show up too, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. Make note of it, but don't worry too much about it right now. And then you're definitely gonna to wanna to check your cyanuric acid, okay? All of these levels are done in parts per million. All these numbers that you see, are based on parts per million, and that's just how chemicals are, are, are um, measured in pool water, parts per million, okay? So, you dip your test strip in, and you're first gonna check out your cyanuric acid, all right? And again, your system is running. Chances are your cyanuric acid is gonna be way down here on the zero level. See that right there? It's gonna be on zero. But I want you to look at the ideal level. See where it says 30 to 50, and then it, and it says okay, and if you go up to 100, it's still okay. And then when you get to 150 and 300, it's high. Don't make the mistake of dumping a ton of cyanuric acid in there. You wanna get your, your level to the ideal on the low range, between 30 and 50, all right? So here's what you're gonna do, all right? You are going to now, with your system running, you're gonna take one pound of cyanuric acid. Remember, it's also called CYA or stabilizer or conditioner. And you're gonna add it directly to the skimmer basket of your pool. Remember, no more than one pound. Your system's running, it'll erode it, it will disperse it and distribute it and into the, into the water, and that's how it's gonna happen. Now, you're gonna, while that's happening, you, at the same time people say, well, you do it individually, you can do all this at once, okay? You're gonna check your chlorine. Your chlorine levels are probably gonna be low. You're gonna take two gallons of liquid chlorine and just walking around the perimeter of your pool, you're gonna pour that those two gallons into your pool. Remember, your equipment is still running, 
All right, that's the second thing you're gonna do after you've tested your water and you've added the cyanuric acid, one pound, right? So the two gallons of liquid chlorine go in. The next thing is gonna to pertain to your pH. Now this gets a little tricky, so I do have a video on adjusting the pH of your pool water, which I put a link to in the description below. So if you wanna get details about this, you can watch that, and I would, if you haven't, suggest you watch it and educate yourself, because it will help. But you look at your pH, and if your pH is low, you're gonna to need to neutralize the acidity. And the way you do that, you're gonna take one pound of your soda ash. Again, one pound, no more, of your soda ash, walking around the perimeter of your pool and distribute it into the water as you walk around the, the edge of your pool, okay? It will get cloudy, but that's it's dissolving and it will distribute and it will clear up fairly quickly. Within an hour or two, it should clear up pretty quickly, okay? Now, that's what you're gonna do if the pH is low. If it is high, if it is high, then you're going to, instead of adding soda ash, you're gonna to go to your liquid muriatic acid. You're gonna take a one gallon jug and you're gonna pour two quarts of the liquid muriatic, muriatic acid, excuse me, into your pool, walking around the perimeter of the pool. Be careful about it splashing, because it is an acid, so it can burn a hole in your clothes. It can also irritate your skin and cause, possibly cause a burn, so if it does splash on you, flush it with water. Same thing with the liquid chlorine. Liquid chlorine is a bleach. So if that splashes on your clothes, it's gonna bleach it. So be careful to not get all this stuff splashed on you, okay? So again, that's the two quarts of muriatic acid if your pH is high. Don't worry about the alkalinity right now. In Arizona, where I do pools, it's usually common for the pH and alkalinity to be similar. So if the pH is low, the alkalinity will be low. And vice versa, if the pH is high, the alkalinity will be high. And when I add those chemicals to bring the pH lower or higher or lower, it's gonna slightly affect the alkalinity as well. So I wouldn't mess with the alkalinity yet. So get your cyanuric acid, your chlorine, and your pH levels ideal and then you can deal with the alkalinity, okay? So, after you've added those chemicals, you're gonna let your system run for a couple hours. That will allow the chemicals to dissolve and distribute into the water, and then test your water again with your test strips. So you've only used two test strips so far. Test your water and check cyanuric acid. If it's low, you're gonna take another pound and you're gonna add it in there. But remember, 30 to 50, do I have this the right way? Yes. 30 to 50, that's not low, that's ideal. So if it's just at 30, you're good. Don't add any more, all right? But if it's lower than that, then add another pound to the skimmer and it will do the same thing, okay? If your chlorine is low, you might wanna add another gallon, but I wouldn't drop two more gallons and I'd add another gallon, okay? If your chlorine is all right, then you can take your chlorine tablets and if you have a floating tablet uh, dispenser, you maybe put two or three tablets in there because they're kind of like time release capsules. They release the thing slowly over a period of time. And then you're just gonna to have to check it weekly and see how much you need. Obviously in the, in the warm summer months when people are using the pool, you're gonna go through more chlorine tablets and you're gonna use more in the floater. And in, in the off months, you're probably gonna use less, okay? Um, <clears throat> and again, if you have an erosion style chlorinator, then your tablets are gonna go in that, all right? If your pH is good, then you're good to go, then you can mess with the alkalinity. But if your pH is still low, chances are if it was low when you first started, it's, and it's, it's still gonna read low if it, if it needs anything. And then you just repeat, add another pound of soda ash around the perimeter of the pool if it's low, and that will start bringing it back up. Just one more pound, all right? If it's, the, if, if it's high, then take another quart or two of your liquid acid and put it around the perimeter of the pool. Wait a couple hours, let it all distribute, test it again, all right? Once your chemicals all get to where your cyanuric acid is good and ideal, your chlorine levels are good, and your pH is balanced and ideal, then you can look at your alkalinity. Chances are your alkalinity would have moved a little bit when you adjusted your pH, but now you can really focus on the alkalinity. Again, if your alkalinity is low, that's where you're gonna grab your bicarbonate of soda Okay, you're gonna grab bicarbonate of soda, take one pound, and with your equipment running, you're gonna walk around the perimeter of the pool and distribute it around the surface of your pool, okay? If it is high, you're gonna do the same thing with 
the dry acid. You're going to take one pound of the dry pool acid and distribute that around the perimeter of your pool on the surface and it'll settle in and, and, and di dissolve, okay? Here's the thing, your equipment is still running, all right? Two hours goes by after you've done one of those or the other and you're gonna put, you're gonna put your test strip in, now you're on three test strip, and you're gonna test and see if your chemistry is good. If not, adjust the alkalinity as needed. Remember, no more than a pound at a time of either one of those two items, okay? Once you've got it going, you're good to go and everything's in place and you're good to go, okay? I've also put a video, a link to my video on adjusting the alkalinity of your pool. So those are things that will help you to further understand what I'm talking about. But that's pretty much all you need to do with your startup chemicals. Some people are very, very um, adamant about not using the stabilized chlorine tablets because there's cyanuric acid in there and they don't want to over saturate the pool. Honestly, the biggest mistake I see people make with cyanuric acid is they take the, the dry cyanuric acid in the tubs and they put way too much in the pool to begin with and then you've already got too much cyanuric acid in there. I will do a video on the controversy, if you will, about liquid chlorine versus uh, stabilized chlorine tablets and based on my experience, I'll give you my opinion on them. Um, I honestly use them, the, the tablets, for all of my pools unless they're saltwater pools and most of the people that do pools in my area, they use those as well because they're convenient. They really don't put as much cyanuric acid as people fear goes into your pool. And um, they really do make things very convenient and you don't have to check your water as often. So I think that's about it. Again, remember, start slow. It's better to add your chemicals slowly so that you don't oversaturate your pool water with chemicals. Because if you do that, you might be back to square one. You have to drain your pool, refill it to dilute the chemicals, okay? So that is my video on startup chemicals and adding them to your pool. And as always, if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments section below. And again, if you have issues with the, with the stabilized chlorine tablets and all that, please, I understand that a lot of people do, or some people do, and I respect that, but I don't really want to debate that subject matter here. I'll do a video on that. And I respect whatever you believe and whatever works well for you, okay? Um, but if you do have any comments or questions, put them in the, in the comment section below this video or you can email me directly and my email address will come across the screen here. It's Kenny, poolschool at gmail.com. Once again, Kenny, poolschool at gmail.com. Always, I want to thank you for watching, remind you to like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so, and share this channel with your friends. And I hope all of this made sense. And even though the pool season is about over, you still have your pool and there are still kids around. So please remember, have fun, be safe, and always watch those kids around water. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.